Good evening. My name is Gary Warzynski. Good to be here. Uh, and I'm a screen retriever, the CEO of Screen Retriever. And with me tonight are the two founders, uh, Victoria and Mark Kemp, which I believe does hand up in the back. So Screen Retriever, uh, as our motto tells you, tries to provide you, uh, as a parent, a window into your child's online world. A little bit of background about why Screen Retriever is important and why it's important to you. There are 25.6 million U.S. households with school-aged children that are connected to the internet. Got the households on the kids. All the kids are pretty connected too. Uh, large, by and large, parents don't know what their children do while they're online. They often, frequently, engage in inappropriate computer and uh, behavior, can be risky, can be dangerous. The effects of which are serious and lasting. Uh, and sadly, the existing internet safety tools that are on the market today simply don't work. Uh, probably have, would have to be living under a rock these days not to, to realize uh, some of the, uh, the high profile cases that are out in the news uh, about kids basically getting themselves into some serious danger uh, on the internet. Uh, some statistics up here uh, that we have some literature at the table in the Cape Cod room. We uh, encourage you to come in and we'll talk to you more about this. As a father of, of four young boys, I was literally shocked to learn that the word porn is the number four most popular search term for kids seven and under, boys and girls. Uh, yeah, yeah my, my reaction exactly. Uh, yeah, 69% of teens have divulged their physical location through an online session. Uh, you know, these are the dangers, these are the statistics that, that keep us as parents awake at night. Uh, and as I mentioned, the, the, the tools that don't work are out there today. And these methods are largely are comprised of three technologies, blockers, filters, and loggers. Uh, our own Harvard University, the Berkman Center, did a prestigious uh, study, well known, that uh, the Wall Street Journal was kind enough to summarize by saying the experts have decreed all of these options for a safer internet to be fatally flawed. Um, fatally flawed because the environment for which these technologies were created has changed dramatically in the 10 to 12 years in which these technologies were first deployed. Uh, simply put, they're yesterday's technologies and they fail to meet today's challenges. Uh, blockers can't keep pace with the proliferation of websites. Uh, nearly 50 million introduced alone in 2009. With the, when the final tally for 2010 comes in, it'll be over 300 million websites. The internet has also changed. If you think about how your kids use the internet, it's gone from a textual-based internet to more a visual-based internet. You know, Facebook, Skype, YouTube, you name it. Uh, and because it's now visual-based, the loggers and the filters, which are text-based, are no longer effective. And for the text-based communication that still exists, chat, I am, and the rest of it, communication itself has changed. Lingo, shorthand, all to you know, K KPC, keep parents clueless, has rendered the filtering and logging technologies uh, somewhat ineffective. And the fourth dynamic which has changed is now the new generation tends to be much more computer savvy than their parents. Uh, you know, I, as, a, as a father, I can teach my kids a lot of things because they haven't gone through it before. But we're finding that today's generation is much more sophisticated than their parents and able to deploy countermeasures such as proxy sites and other things to basically stay one step ahead of their parents. <coughs> Enter Screen Retriever. So Screen Retriever was built by Mark and Victoria. And it was really built out of a parent's concern about their own children's internet habits. They were dissatisfied with the tools that we just discussed. They, were, they found they were unable to teach and supervise their children how to use the computer and the internet safely and effectively. And they realized they needed a new approach, one that followed the general premise that you should be able to parent online the same way you parent <coughs> offline. So you'll find, if you know the market, is a unique approach in the children's internet safety world. It's about being teaching, it's about teaching and being proactive. It's about a real-time visual account of what's going on on every computer in your home. Uh, and because it's a, a parent's, a family's tool, we believe one license should cover every computer in your home. And you should, the child should know what you're doing. And that is, you should, you should have a conversation with your children, you should discuss why you are monitoring and supervising them, and that you will intervene. There's, a, there's an icon that will be in the taskbar as a visual reminder for the, for the kids to do the right thing. You can view all computer activity, every application, web, web chat, no matter what it is. It's very easy to use and it's convenient and unobtrusive to use for the parent. Um, we have full functioning demo in the Cape Cod room. We're happy to entertain um, you know, any questions you may have about the way it works. But very simply, this would be my computer, for example. You notice there's two logos up in the right corner representing my two children's computers. If I click on one, I'm instantly brought to their computer screen. I see that uh, my son is 
proofreading the executive summary for screen retriever so he <laughs> earns his allowance. Uh, playing a little bit of uh, spider solitaire to say he's going to win this game. And who can deny a guilty pleasure of Lady Gaga's bad romance? Uh, I close that. It moves up to the upper right corner, so I'm able to visually monitor it. Uh, you can see when Solitaire launches, I'm able to go back about my work on the main computer. So that's Screen Retriever. Uh, thank you for having us. Thank you, Bobby. Uh, we're a young company. We're here for three, three reasons. Uh, aside from the exposure, you know, we're looking for funding. Uh, we're looking for beta testers to uh, test the new, new launch of the product. And we're also it's a market-driven company, so we're always looking for talent, especially in the marketing world. Thank you very much. Anyone with questions? Yes, sir. The handheld. So our, our, our extension right now is uh, is as follows. Right now we're a PC-based uh, platform, so it pretty much works on anything Microsoft's put out in the last 10 years. Our next extension will be Mac. And our extension after that will be the hand, uh, the handhelds, including the tablets. Well, actually, the tablets will probably be covered by the Mac. We'll be looking at the, uh, the Droid, likely the Palm, uh, likely Windows, and uh, Android. Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, I have a question about uh, you know when the parents are monitoring their child's screen, but how do you prevent them going after you sleep? Is there some sort of trigger point where you can see when they have entered some inappropriate uh, content can somehow? keep track of that? Because no, it might not be 24-7 on the screen, right? So. It's a good question. Uh, so the, our newest release incorporates recording technology. So it's, it's important distinction between us and the other products out there. We don't Some nice feature where you can capture the moments they're doing inappropriate material. That's better than actually recording the whole 24/7. Well, <laughs> inappropriate is contextual, right? Yeah. Uh, we had this discussion in the last room. You know, someone says, "Why don't you block a game?" Well, there are times when games are appropriate. You know, if you want to blow a little steam off, you just finish your homework, play a game. That's fine. You know, but if you have a deadline or you're supposed to be doing your homework, or you're not, you know, if you're in a timeout or whatever it happens to be, and you're not supposed to be playing a video game, then all of a sudden it's a bad thing. Uh, like YouTube, like Facebook, like all these other things. They're no longer binary, yes, no, good, bad. You, know, you, can, you can get in a lot of trouble on, on Facebook. At the same time, some of our educational advisors are setting up uh, support groups, homework support groups on Facebook and, and the rest. So, What I want to say, like the young kids today are actually really smart. If they want to do something, they don't want their parents to find out, there's a ways that they can do it. So you got to be kind of have a smarter technology that, you know, cover them, cover that. No, I agree. They, they are, they, which is a great reason why uh, the other technologies do often fail. Yes, sir. Have you thought about marketing this in the work environment to yeah. monitor yes. work? Yes. <laughs> so, we thought about it. Uh, uh, frankly, uh, we're, we're focused on the home market today. Our next extension will likely be in the educational and after school space. <coughs> oh, some of our advisors are schools. And as many of you may know, now schools are going to one laptop or one computer per child. And as you can imagine, a classroom you know, half the size of this room one teacher trying to make sure that all the kids are focused on their, on their rooms, they're looking for a tool like this that would, so that they can see on a, on a big screen or their own private screen that they're doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, Boys and Girls Club and other after school activities would be next. Um, and then, you know, there's some other legal issues and, and sort of societal issues that we'll get into as we evaluate the corporate space and move forward. All right, we're going to move on now. Okay. Thank you all. Again, we're in the Cape Cod room and we welcome uh, our questions.